Yes, it is. We are about to, oops. <laughs> we are about to do a video with Miss Earth USA, Marissa Butler. Okay, let's settle it. Uh, okay. Let's just see how it is. <gasps> Perfect. There we go. This is Keep it nice and cozy. <laughs> Well, welcome friends. Welcome to I Love The Way You Talk With KK. I have Miss Earth USA, Marissa Butler. It is such an honor. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. Aww. I think it's just amazing that we get to meet people, come together, and then just be like, you know what? There's value. We want to bring it to you. Uh, and so it all happened here this weekend in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho at the Global Beauty Awards show. Was this your first time? It was. And that's... There we go. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was my first time in the Global Beauty Awards. I was really happy to come and see my friend Tree. I was nominated for 11 different awards. She ended up walking away with three of them last night. So I was really happy to be able yeah. to be there and supporting her. And then also just to see the amazing production that Maureen put on. And it's been on my bucket list for a few years now. So I'm really happy to have made it out this year. I love it. Same. It was my first <laughs> time. And for anybody watching, you just need to make Make it out here next year for the fifth annual one because there's only so much you can really share in photos and videos and the rest you have exactly. to experience it in person <laughs> um no that's amazing so tell us how has your reign been so far as Miss Earth USA? Of course. Well, it's been already a real whirlwind. I've been able to travel to a lot of different places around the United States, which I've been very fortunate since my year is still during a pandemic. So a lot of queens haven't been able to do as much travel. So thankfully I've been fully vaccinated, was able to yes. go not only, uh, so one of my goals has always been to be able to travel to the four corners of the continental <gasps> United States with Ooh. my title and I've already accomplished that uh, as of this weekend. So I got to go to Washington <laughs> where I flew in and then came here to Idaho, yeah. but I also actually won my title in Florida. I live oh. in San Diego and I'm originally from Maine. So I actually was able to go home to Maine to work with Center for Wildlife, which is where my advocacy really started was home in Maine with the Center for Wildlife. So I absolutely mm -hmm. love to be able to have the opportunity so far. That's amazing, that's amazing. So how long have you waited for the moment to hear your name <laughs> as Miss Earth USA? Uh, a decade. A so decade. Years. Oh, wow. Yes. So I started pageants when I was uh, 17 years old and I won Miss Earth USA just a week after my 27th birthday. <gasps> so it was a wonderful birthday present that mm -hmm. I was able to have, be able to spend time with especially with my family, having not been able to see them for over a year and a half yeah. prior to that. Um, and so be able to have my family come down to Florida. I have a lot of family in Florida to be able to celebrate that moment with me. was just so special. It is. Mm -hmm. It is. I, I love it. So tell me, what do you think allows one gal to stand out from another on a stage like that? Well, I think that the biggest thing is to really learn who you are as a person and really champion that person fiercely. Mm -hmm. uh, you're never going to be able to win a pageant if you are playing the comparison game. You're saying, yeah. oh, I want to be like her in this way or her like in that mm -hmm. way or uh, worried about the competitors because at the end of the day, they're not asking, you know, Marissa to be better than, you know, Susie Liu. They're asking <laughs> Marissa to be better than Marissa was yesterday and yes. as a year before. And so for me, especially having had previous pageant titles that was so important that I showed up not only as the best version of myself but stronger than I ever have before in other pageants and I think that that really goes to show especially if they do know your history showing that you are giving your all at every single stage and continuously growing yes. and becoming a better version of yourself I think that is one of the biggest things you can do to make yourself stand out in a pageant oh I love it it could not have been said better <laughs> Is this the only system that you have competed in pageantry? No, so this was actually, um, I competed in a lot of different systems. So I started off in the Miss USA teen system okay. uh, in Maine, and then I transitioned over to the Miss America system for a while, had a bad wow. case of first runner-ups in that system. Oh. Uh, so <laughs> I feel you, I feel you. We should talk about what it's like to feel like a first runner-up. <laughs> I've been first runner-up probably more times than any other position I've had 
in competing, whether as far as my placement goes. So that happened quite a few times, but at least within the Miss America system back in the day, you did get to go to the National Sweetheart Pageant. So I did get to experience oh. that in Houston, Illinois as well. Um, but then I made the transition back to the USA system, was able to win Miss US, Miss Maine USA 2016. Congratulations. Miss USA. Thank you so much. Um, and after that journey, I went back to Miss America in California. Um, and from there, I got uh, noticed by Miss World America and ended up winning that title that year and mm -hmm. going to represent the USA at Miss World. Got the top three Miss World Sportswoman Award. Wow. <laughs> and, uh, then, uh, you know, everyone was expecting me to hang up my pageant heels and retire, but I always wanted to end on Miss Earth USA. That has always been a huge goal of mine. I've been an environmental advocate since I was a little girl. So this system really speaks to who I am as a person. And I really wanted this to be my last and final hurrah in pageantry. Uh, and so this will be my last competition, Aww. but you won't be able to get rid of me that easily. <laughs> I'm going to be going on into the directorship side after this with the Miss Earth USA system wow. as the state director. So looking forward to continuing on my work in the future with Miss Earth USA. That is impressive. I love how visionary you are. <laughs> you have a vision and you just keep going after it. So since you have been in Miss World and Miss America and Miss USA and now Miss Earth <laughs> Systems, all four, I've got to say, oh, how does Miss Earth stand out? I know it speaks to you personally mm -hmm. because it's something you've advocated from a young age, but how? what do you like more about Miss Earth in comparison to other systems well, or I vice versa? Hands down, they were the, my most favorite directorship team that I've ever worked with. Okay. Uh, not to say that the other ones weren't amazing, it's just they, Laura and her team go above and beyond to make mm -hmm. sure that their title holders are really taken care of, that they're having an amazing experience, and not just as the final winner, but yeah. also every single girl who goes to Miss Earth USA, uh, who walks on that stage, is made to feel special, is made to feel mm -hmm. welcomed and part of a true community. and. One thing that really stood out to me was also Miss Earth USA really advocates for you having your own voice on a variety of different subjects where I feel sometimes within pageantry I'm almost taught to refrain from speaking on mm -hmm. certain subjects. And when the Black Lives Matter movement uh, hit the United States uh, last year, we actually had a meeting with our directors and they advocated for us to go out and speak out, go to the protests if we wanted to, but also gave us the tools how to do it safely and mm -hmm. appropriately. Uh, so I really love that they were encouraging us to have our own voice and to speak out on causes that are near and dear to our heart. What's one of the biggest causes that you've spoken up about? <sighs> Well, <laughs> I don't know. I think that it's just one of those things where you are in the public eye for so long, it's hard not to comment on any mm -hmm. real big event that's going on during the time. I know that for me as a woman in finance, just being able to speak about women in uh, in STEM type roles, I, I think that has been something that I've been very impactful about speaking mm -hmm. on, especially because I know what it's like to be the only woman in the room. I know what it's like to mm -hmm. be intimidated by that. Um, but I also know the power you have if you're able to get past that initial fear and speak and advocate for yourself yeah. as a woman in those types of fields. So that would be one of my biggest pieces of advice to any woman and you know Zozie said it best take up space yes. you know, make sure you're taking up space in this world because we all deserve the space that we have earned we with our education with our advocacy and not to let that slip by just because we're intimidated mm -hmm. uh, so I would say that has been the one that has been the most near and dear to my heart uh, that I've spoken up against uh, yes. so yeah that would be <laughs> I love it I love it no I completely 1000% mm -hmm. agree like women are born with something very unique and I would say one person's light never dims mine. Exactly. And when we just <laughs> empower each other and when we make room and space for every single person to come in and feel comfortable in our presence, that's a gift. It is. That's a gift to not be in a room or in an atmosphere where you are comparing, mm -hmm. where you are striving to mm -hmm. be somebody you're not mm -hmm. you know when you are just like oh this is just so un mm -hmm. uncomfortable or envy or jealousy like 
just yeah. push it all aside. Like there's <laughs> no reason to ever compare yourself to anybody because every single mm -hmm. woman shines her own light. Mm -hmm. She just needs to discover it and dive deeper exactly. and just allow that to come through. <laughs> one thing I always say to women who are competing in pageants who might be intimidated by one of their fellow contestants or are a little bit afraid of the competition aspect of it is just to always remember if you're intimidated by another woman, it means you admire her. You admire Ooh. something about her, something that you wish you might have had in yourself. It kind mm -hmm. of speaks to the the jealousy. You know, instead of looking at it as being jealous, look at it as being inspired. And then you'll be able to approach that woman with a kind and open heart. And you would be it's just amazed at the amount of personal growth you'd be able to have when you make those connections with the yes. women that you might have thought you were intimidated by, mm -hmm. but really could become your best friend. So. A well, mm -hmm. great example of that for me was when I went to Miss World. Obviously, there's a million <laughs> gorgeous women oh, who it's are like all, living, walking, yes. talking Barbies. <laughs> <laughs> and they're all so accomplished and well spoken and gorgeous. And so it's hard not to be intimidated when you're in a situation like that. But for me, one girl really stuck out. And obviously, she did to the judges as well Vanessa Ponce de Leon of Mexico, <laughs> who ended up winning Miss World. Uh, we ended up becoming really close. Very uh, best friends of the pageant and the reason why is because I sought out that friendship so fiercely because I, mm -hmm. out of all the girls she was the one who intimidated me the most and I wanted to make sure that I wasn't letting that hinder my ability to make friends with her yes. and by becoming friends with her I've been able to have so much personal growth mm -hmm. through her mentorship I don't think that I would have been able to win Miss Earth USA without her wow. so making sure that if you are intimidated by a woman realize that's just a compliment to her mm -hmm. and you need to see that in a positive light so that it can also become something positive for you in the future as well. I love that. I mm -hmm. love, I absolutely love that. You know, I even always told myself if there's something that's not sitting right with me towards a certain person and I feel like the more you overcome yourself in these situations, the more you just start to love upon people. You're like, I can't really like hate or dislike. I mean, that just doesn't exist. <laughs> But I, but I know when I was younger, if I had that moment, mm -hmm. I would actually stop and mentally wish her the best. Yes. Like I would almost like release a little prayer into the universe <laughs> over that gal. And it helps you mm -hmm. to love upon that person and not be intimidated or jealous or kind mm -hmm. of like, you know what? No. Exactly. <laughs> Can we kind of go back and talk about what it was like to be a first runner up? You said it's been, <laughs> it's happened multiple times. Oh. You know, it's a topic that's not often conversed about, mm -hmm. unfortunately. And people that end up in this position of being first runner up, coming so close to winning, sometimes I feel like it's even harder than when you place in the top five or semi finalist because of you're course. like, Mm -hmm. I was almost there. <laughs> I know. Well, the thing about pageants is it's so subjective. And what I always tell any of the girls that I'm coaching is uh, at the end of the day, there's going to be more than one girl who deserves the crown just because there's more than one girl who put a lot of work and effort, uh, who really has had a huge transformation for themselves, who would be able to carry the crown with elegance and poise. So, that's the hard part about being first runner up is now you know you are one of those girls who is deserving of the title mm -hmm. but you don't get the chance to actually have that moment and have that reign uh and it's really uh it's disheartening you know you get so close you get so excited and for a second when it's the final two you really believe it could be you mm -hmm. and you allow yourself to believe that for a second um and you know, it, that's been oh, something that was a big struggle for me at first. My first pageant I ever did, I placed first in a up the next year. Congratulations on like, just the fact that you. it was your first one and you were first and runner up. The next year I was first runner up. And the next year I was first runner up. Mm. And the next year I was first runner up. So it was, <laughs> I think it was. Um, it was either four or five times I was first in a row, row. In a row. In a row. Um, Marissa, and how <laughs> did you handle it? I need to hear this for my own sanity. Um, it was wow. hard. And I think that the big reason why I ended up not getting into that winner position is because I wasn't going in with the right mindset. I was still comparing. I was still very, I say, immature in the way I was approaching the other women in that situation and, and seeing it as something that I was lacking rather 
rather than me being so close. So when you're a first year up, it's hard not to think, what did I do wrong? What could I have done better? Um, but the reality is you didn't do anything wrong. And I, I had this wonderful opportunity to speak to one of the judges after the last time I was first runner up. And I was asking her, so what, what did I not do? And she's like, it's not that you didn't do anything. It was just that, that night and that weekend, that girl showed up as the best version of herself. And we can see more potential in you to become a better version of yourself. And so they didn't want to send me before I was ready. Um, and sometimes that's all it is, is just wanting to make sure that when you get that opportunity, because when you go to Miss USA, you go to Miss America, you get one shot and that's it. And so you don't want to go too soon. So sometimes we get so caught up in wanting to win in the moment and not realizing what that can mean for us in our long-term trajectory within our goals. And for me, I, I mean, I feel like everything happened for me at the right time for the right reason. If I had won Miss Maine America back then when I kept getting first runner up, mm -hmm. I never would have done Miss California America. I never would have been seen by the Miss World America staff and I wouldn't have become a national title holder. Yes with the Miss World system. So everything happens for a reason. It all is you know, divine timing and you just have to trust that if it is for you, it will be for you. Yes. And if it's not, it means that you're being pushed into another path that is more well suited for who you are. And for me, Miss America wasn't the fit for me. Mm -hmm. And as much as I loved that system growing up, I realized that there are so many other amazing systems out there that speak to who I am as a person mm -hmm. on a deeper level and I don't have to change who I am to fit into that mold because I already am the person mm -hmm. that they're looking for just by being me. And I think that's a big thing that I would tell any girl who's trying to decide what pageant system to join is get to know yourself first yes. and then get to know the different pageants because there is one out there for every single person and you want to make sure if you're representing an organization that is one that you align with uh, and is close to your heart, which is why Miss Earth USA is my favorite system I have ever been a part of just because I've always been an earth advocate and mm -hmm. so to be in a system that really champions the same morals that I do, uh, that has been the greatest experience I've had within pageantry yet. Um, and I haven't even got to go to the international yet. And wow. <laughs> so just now I'd be able to be even a state title holder in this system. I, for me, it just was so rewarding because I was doing the work that I truly loved and was passionate about. And when you leave with love and passion, that's when you can make a real impact and change mm -hmm. on the world. So if you're wanting to do pageant, the whole point is to have a mi microphone and to be able to make an impact. And the best way you can do that is by being in a system that can help you be the best you that you can be. She is so eloquent. And I'm sure <laughs> everybody watching can agree. Can I, can I ask you an honest question? Mm -hmm. What was the first like two weeks after placing first runner up like for you? <laughs> Like, you know, you come home, you come back to reality, so to speak, mm -hmm. and you're processing mm -hmm. these different thoughts. I mean, mm -hmm. one of them you already said, you're just like, what did I do wrong? Or what could I have done better? That's just the mm -hmm. most classical thought that crosses your mind because you're just like, oh, if I just did something better, I would have won. So like, just how do you handle the thoughts? Like, what was it just like for you? Well, I think the biggest thing is just to remind yourself that it's five judges who are very subjective and it just, and no five people are going to always think you're the best person in the room. That's true. And so <laughs> that, you know, it helps you cut the, the sting of it a little bit by reminding yourself of that. Um, but for me, it was just about, you know, diving into the other things that I love. Um, and for me at the time, that was my school and sports. And so I really just, put a lot of effort and focus in on that is to help me kind of get through that first two weeks because it is really hard. Um, you know, sometimes it's hard to see the girl with the crown on her head afterwards. Um, and so similar to what you had said earlier, how if you are in a situation where you're almost feeling that envy creep in um, to just like suffocate that girl with kindness. And, uh, <laughs> that helps because the more you get to know the girl, the more you realize, you know, every single girl who is makes, you know, who's in a pageant or makes top five, they're all 
wonderful women who are deserving in their own right. And the more you get to know them, the less it feels like a something is a deficiency in you and more of just recognizing the beautiful spark in another person. And for me, I actually created one of my greatest friendships with my friend Kristen Corda. She was uh, Miss Maine America, I think it was 2013. Um, and that year I actually went down to watch Miss America in person for the first time to support her as her first runner up. And being That's able so to nice. go, uh, that it meant so much to her that we have became friends ever since. She'll call me up every year for my birthday. She's a beautiful voice and she'll sing me happy birthday, Aww. but like her own rendition of happy birthday. So wow. it's just, it's really amazing to see what type of beautiful friendships can come of it. If you're able to take the, the, the emotions mm -hmm. and pain of being first in her out of the equation and just mm -hmm. really focusing on that, you know, it just wasn't my time. It wasn't for me. And, honoring the girl that does mm -hmm. get the opportunity because the worst thing especially when you're on the other side and you're the winner is you know the animosity that can sometimes mm -hmm. come from the girls who don't win and just because it's not like you're going out there to personally attack a girl it's no. just that was your time that was your moment and sometimes that can take away from it so i would never want to be the girl who made some other girls first two weeks of their reign miserable because when it should be a happy wonderful celebrating time so just always to remember that yes we can be upset that our girl doesn't win whether you're a fan or a contestant or a mom but at the end of the day pageants are about supporting other women it's about uplifting other women and we cannot buy into the fact that you know yes it's a competition but we're also here for each other, yep. not just against each other. Yes. And to remind yourself of that fact. And that took me a while to learn. I would say I wasn't perfect, you know, my first few times being first in a rap, I was a little salty. Um, but, you know, it's something that comes from maturity and going through the experience a couple times and just realizing that your self-worth is never dictated by a crown. I've always carried my own crown with me, which whether I got first in a rap, I didn't place or you know mm -hmm. ended up winning uh, because the crown is not what makes the queen the queen is what makes the crown yeah. uh, so that is the biggest piece of advice I would have is just to always carry yourself like you did win because just getting up on that stage and putting yourself out there to the world it is an accomplishment in of itself and to just never feel disappointed in doing so well as being first in a rap. I mean, mm -hmm. that's, you got second place of like some of the most amazing women. Mm -hmm. And that should be something you're proud of rather than sad. I know it's hard, but trust me, it, it is so much better if you end up befriending the girl who won yes. because you'll realize how amazing she is yes. um, and fall in love with her the same way that the judges did. Oh, I love that. So at the end of the day, pageantry is all about relationships. <laughs> it's, they always say you find your maid of honor, you find your best friend, you find your girlfriends for life in pageantry because you're all goal oriented, driven, you're passionate, you want to leave an impact. And when those type of women come together, they just need to support each other, mm -hmm. uh, see the best in one another and know that uh, whatever the outcome is, that's how it needs to be. But it's true. If you walk off being just salty <laughs> and, you know, and don't really talk to anybody and make those connections, you know, not only did you potentially lose that crown that you mm -hmm. were working so hard for, now mm -hmm. you've lost in relationships and friendships yes. um, that could benefit you so much mm -hmm. with the years to and come. And out of all the titles I had, I would trade them all if I had to give up the friendships I made along the way for those titles. I, I would pick the friendships over and over and over again, over any title I've ever held. Because um, I couldn't imagine my life without these women in my yeah. life now. I mean, like you said, they're going to be my bridesmaids and my maid of honors. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's one girl who's going to be my bridal party. <laughs> so I haven't met two pageants. Uh, so, you know, it. it's one of those special things because a crown is for a year and a friend is for life. Oh, and yes. that is so important to really focus on supporting each other because like you said, this powerful dynamic women who are making real changes in their community and who wouldn't want to be able to network with that and to be able to grow? I mean, we have so many women that I've met who've been able to create their own businesses and collaborate together to be able to help each other grow and succeed mm -hmm. in life because we supported one another mm -hmm. and because we had the same common shared experience of pageantry. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's really important to just 
to think about your life past the crown. It's, yeah. it's not just this one year. Your yes. life is your entire <laughs> life. And what is going to help you most in the long term is those networking opportunities and those yes. connections you make with the women along the way. Oh, I'm so happy <laughs> I met you. Me too. <laughs> no, this is beautiful. So just to wrap it up, mm -hmm. what is maybe some final thoughts that you just want to share or something that you see women struggling with big time and you're mm -hmm. just like, here's the solution that I find that helps or that may work. <laughs> well, kind of going back to uh, placement and pageantry and not putting so much of your heart and soul into where you stack up in the pageant. So for my college thesis, I studied economics and I was, behavioral economics was kind of my niche. And looking at my college thesis, I actually did it on pageantry and how uh, your different factors factor into your placement. And it was specifically for the Miss USA uh, competition at the time. And I found that there was no real strong statistical significance on any single one line item to be able to determine what your uh, placement would be. It was uh, the strongest one was about 20%. Uh, so that really goes to show how subjective pageant scoring really is. It really is down to the preferences of the judges on that day. You can have the same judges, two days later and a completely different outcome, even with all the same girls. Um, and it's just about, a, it's all subjective. So not to put so much pressure to on yourself for a certain placement to validate who you are as a person, knowing mm -hmm. that you've already done the work and love mm -hmm. who you are and just show up as the best version of yourself because that is how you actually win a pageant. It doesn't matter if you walk away with a crown or not, you are a winner if you're able to walk away a better version of yourself than you were before this experience. And I always like to think of pageants as the ultimate finishing school. And I, like I, <laughs> I mean, it helped me personally go from a shy young girl to a woman who is not afraid to talk to anyone. Uh, and I think that it's really important to just kind of focus on the overarching goal is to become a better version of yourself at the end of the day. So not to take too much heart in the placement mm -hmm. um, and just to support every single girl who comes into your life through pageantry because we're all there for the same goal. Yes, yes. So have a life after pageantry, <laughs> like a life that you want to live. Mm -hmm. Like pageantry should be an accessory to yes. who you are. I don't mm -hmm. think that should be your final destination because yes. if it is, it's devastating. You're going to leave those weekends potentially being first runner up or not placing or, you know, whatever it is and being like, wow, now what? What am I going to do? <laughs> All good. Anyway, well, thank you so much for being on, yeah, Marissa. Of course. Thank I you for really having me. I think we uh, just <laughs> expanded our sisterhood circle. <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> okay, we'll see you next time, guys. Bye.